Today's physics lecture was presented by Caltech professor Sean Carroll and is titled The Origin of the Universe and the Arrow of Time. Um, the main idea of the lecture was that entropy is constantly increasing throughout time. There are points in time where it is constant and stagnant, but other points in time where it's increasing. And at the beginning of the universe, uh, in the Big Bang, it was there was a state of low, very low entropy where there was a low chance of randomness and disorder. Basically, at the beginning of, our, of the Big Bang, one second after the Big Bang happened, uh, there was just white. Um, there was no matter had formed yet. And so that was so, something I learned was the idea of entropy. I didn't really know what entropy was going into the lecture. Um, and entropy is defined as a thermodynamic quantity representing the unavailability of a system's thermal energy for conversion into mechanical work. And it's often interpreted as randomness in a system, which is the definition that Sean Carroll mainly used in his lecture. Now, his explanation for why at, during the beginning of our universe there was a state of low entropy is that our universe was created by another universe, which he calls a entropy of the multiverse, which increases without bound. So he thinks that um, given the arrow of time, our universe, we look back on the past um, as a state of low entropy, and our universe was created by some other universe, which could have been created by a parent universe. Now all of this is theoretical, and I don't know if I believe it or not, but he states that our universe is a baby universe. Um, and comes from some other universe, which could have come from a baby universe, which could have, and it goes on infinitely um, for an infinite amount of time. Um, and so, the reason he he thinks that our universe came from another could possibly have come from another baby universe, is that we have no explanation for what happened before the Big Bang, um, and since there is low entropy at the beginning of our universe, there must have been some sort of entropy, some system with entropy before ours. And so our, our universe began very dense and um, kind of smooth, where it was completely white. Point one, or one second after the Big Bang occurred, it was just no matter, barely, like, it was completely smooth and white. There was no matter formation yet. Um, and so one thing that I found interesting was that he seems to describe the time arrow as being linear, but it's all from your perspective. So he thinks that there is another universe out there um, way back in time where their, ti their uh, timeline is in the exact opposite direction is ours, meaning um, that our two universes are perfectly symmetrical, where we look back on them as our past in a state of low entropy, but they look back on us as a state of low entropy with their future being increasing in entropy, um, which I thought was kind of unique, but also kind of hard to grasp. Um, the What really sparked my curiosity in from his lecture was that if our universe is is coming from a baby universe, which came from a baby universe, which came from a baby universe, when did the parent, how did the parent universe form initially? There must have been some parent universe. In order for his theory to work, there has to be a parent universe that where all the baby universe is derived from. And I don't really think that there is a single parent universe that the, all the other universes derived from. Um, and as a conclusion, he concluded that um, the past is not the future because the early universe had very low entropy. That was basically his thesis for the lecture. He began it very simple, put it in simple terms of defining time, what is time, and what is space, and how are they related. Um, but understanding that question is the challenge that... Um, cosmologist has to have to figure out and I don't know if 
we'll find it soon or not, but it could be within the next 10 years, it could be within the next 100 years, or we may never know. So it's all very still theoretical, and I'm not sure if I believe it or not, but he had very good, I guess, his theory was sound, but look, he lacks the evidence besides mathematical evidence. There's no real evidence that that theory could uh, be, I don't know, accurate. But yeah, that was my impression from the lecture. Thanks.